Hey, I'm Sandy Rakowitz of One Heart Healing Center. We were just having a conversation about animal communication and uh, pet loss and end-of-life care with animals. And Matthias, uh, uh, we started having a conversation about uh, his uh, sweet dog that uh, passed away a while back. Yeah, 2015. It was a beautiful little Maltese toy poodle, mm -hmm. multi-poo. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had a pretty good life. He lived 16 and a half years, and, but he was kind of getting on in the years, and he was, uh, went blind in both eyes and couldn't quite make it around too well and get out and couldn't really go on walks well because he couldn't see and was apprehensive and long since had, you know, stopped playing with toys and, you know, it was... You know, it's one of those things that kind of really creeps up on you that you don't realize as a pet owner that, wow, I, I got to make some kind of a choice here that's not a, not a fun thing. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, sometimes an animal will go on their own, and uh, other, and, and also there are times when uh, you, it's. You look at the quality of their life, and also as one of my f good friends and colleague who has this wonderful program, Spirits in Transition, talks about with pet hospice, is looking at the quality of the end of their life, and uh, what kinds of things that you can do to support them, and what is that decision, you know, what we were talking about is that decision-making process, and what it does to us, it's such a place inside of us, you know, to have to come to that decision about if you're deciding about euthanasia, um, uh, that it goes against everything, every fiber in your being to make that kind of a decision uh, with somebody that you care so deeply about. And, uh, and yet, it comes from a place of care and love. And and then there's also this the whole thing is which we were really having our a lot of uh, deep conversation about is is what happens after uh, an animal passes and that sense of loss and what happens inside our heart and uh, you know that some people feel like I'm never I don't want to get another dog because I don't or another cat or another horse because I don't want to ever go through that again I hear that a lot and I, you actually. Yeah, I mean, having experienced that side of the equation has sort of had me take a step back and think twice about the idea of having another dog. And so I, I asked uh, Matthias if he feels that connection with him, uh, with your dog. What was his name? Sonny. Sonny. Uh, and Sonny the puppy. And <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call him all 16 and a half years of his life. <laughs> My floor manager. <laughs> Your floor manager, I love that. <laughs> so cute. And so um, I asked that, and he, he said, he paused and he said, when he tunes in. And, and that helped open this conversation um, because about how we are always connected and it's not dependent upon whether or not we're in a physical body or not, but that's how as humans we think about that. We're, I believe that we are a soul, a spirit, inhabiting a human body, and that our spirit, our consciousness, lives on beyond this physical body. And I believe that goes with the animals as well. And so uh, he, he said that he thought he saw this white flash this morning and that perhaps he was actually seeing him as as we were getting ready for me to come over and do all this videotaping this afternoon. And I said, yeah, you know, that it helped that create that opening where he was uh, in a differently receptive state. Yeah, I really was not, I haven't seen a thing, a little flash like that. And it was like, that's unusual, but it was like, it was like there for a second. It was really kind of trippy, and I didn't even give it another thought. I thought I'd just, you know, floaty in the eye or something, you know. But then, 
once you got here, then I realized maybe there's something else. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I, I, I know from, uh, you know, I've dealt with so many animals in my life of my own uh, that have passed away, dogs, cats, horses, um, well over 20. And, um, and so I've been through that process a lot. Uh, and, and certainly with clients, I'm facilitating that process with clients in terms of uh, how they are with their animal, what their animal's needs are, a lot of end of life, uh, supportive care, uh, working with veterinarians and, uh, and with their clients through that process. And, and also I work with so many people with uh, pet loss afterwards because I've had such profound experiences with that with myself and what, what they have shown me and what I've learned through the animals is they helped me experience this, these connections that we have that don't ever go away. And that when we feel that pain, when we think about them, uh, it's n not because we aren't connected, which is where we think it is, right? Because we think that once the body dies, that that's it, but that's not the truth of it. But we've, you know, our connections, we stop things because it's so painful. And really what's happening is that we're connecting with the pain of the loss when we're at, we are connecting. You get, it's like we feel them and what we go to is the pain and we think that's all there is, but really it's, it's asking for us to let that move differently so that we can actually let in these other perspectives and have those kinds of experiences. Oh, there you go, you know. I mean, I talk with my animals all the time still, not just the ones who are in their physical bodies, but, um, you know, my dog Haley, I did a whole uh, series of pet hospice and end-of-life support care uh, while she was going through that stage in her life, uh, it's about four years ago now, and um, uh, because she had so much to offer and teach and still does. So, um, you know, your dog is sitting here with us right now, actually, <laughs> as is my Haley and many others who passed on here in support of having these conversations because they've been. Uh, taboo. They've been, you know, uh, people throughout the centuries have been touted as crazy and have been had all kinds of horrible things happen to them because we talk with, uh, have those connections. And uh, we're living in a time where it's actually this is being uh, more more acknowledged, uh, and uh, we have professions in this now where we actually do have these connections and contacts and and receive information and messages and support and care and contact and uh, where it's becoming more and more widely accepted and uh, we're fortunate to to have chosen this time that we can have these conversations and not be locked up and burned and so forth and so because it's really important that is our awakening that is I believe really part of what we're here for is to be able to have these kinds of conversations and allow ourselves to have these connections. I'm wondering about some of the uh, emotional aspects of this. Like, um, I know that as it was getting to the point where that day was coming, and you know, I would just pick up my little dog and you know, walk him around, and you know, just kind of be with him, you know, it's like, to me, it seemed like he didn't want that. It was like, he just leave me alone kind of a thing, is what, I, is what I felt when I would try to embrace him in that way. It was like, this ain't, this isn't right, you know, and you just, that's just my sense, it's like a sixth sense, you know. So, um, but I mean, you know, you, you have that innate desire to somehow express that love that you have for that creature, for that being. And then, you know, on the other side of it, um, you wonder, you know, after the, you know, having to go through that process, 
you know, you, you wonder kind of these beings, how they adventure on into their next life, their next adventures, and you, you know, at, at this point, you know, I figured, well, he's probably reincarnated as some other little puppy by now, you know. And so you wonder, well, how does, how does that connection still happen? It's such a great question, and I think it's, we, we look at this from a linear place, you know, from this very uh, human perspective. And uh, what I experience and what I have learned through the animals, actually, is about, um, this is what I currently am seeing and believing, is that uh, each soul can incarnate in different ways at different times, but still have a core soul s substance, if you will. And uh, it's, so it's not like, because I used to think, oh, well, once they reincarnate into another body, then, well, then it didn't make sense to me because I, there's still a connection, but yet, so we think that, that connection, it's the same kind of deal where we think that because of the human body, we can't have that connection. And I don't believe that anymore. I believe that it's uh, no matter how we're incarnated or not, we still have these connections. And, you know, quantum physics talks about uh, this sense of we are all connected. It's not always looked at in terms of our animal connections and our nature connections and, uh, and soul. It's at this point in time, the focus is on we're this interweb of human beings. But I, from my perspective, I really believe that it's all of the, the soul connections and incarnations it happens simultaneously. It's, all still, it's always connected. It's always connected. We are always really having that connection. And I know for me that when I lose that sense, because that happens still sometimes, you know, get disconnected, um, uh, that it's, you know, it's not a good feeling. And when, when we're in and with those connections, that's when all the good, yummy, nourishing, satisfying, pleasurable, great things are experienced and happen. And, and uh, so I always know that like that flag for me is, okay, I'm in the realm of, okay, this isn't, I'm not really connected or I'm not grounded or I'm not in that, you know, I arrived here in like a jostled place and, and, and I can see, you know, no, I wasn't all fully connected. <laughs> all the dots weren't connecting right then and there, you know. And, it, and it's how we bring ourselves back. It's how we bring ourselves back. It's not that it's not going to happen. It's how can we keep, you know, breathe our way back into ourselves. And how can you reconnect with your dog. And, you know, what you asked before, like, what's the point? The point is because it's here and it's part of love and it's part of, uh, being human and maintaining, I, I believe that our connections and our contact is everything. And, and that it all points back to how we are in that appreciation and gratitude and, if you will, that place of love, whatever that means for you. And, and that we are much more greatly enhanced and nourished when we have those, when we allow the fullest, the f more full connections. I think that it only enhances our life, not, you know, and, and our concern about not, you know, like why, that is from the fear, that's from, that's the pain speaking. And I get it, you know, I get it. But that contact, I mean, you know, you light up when you talk about this dog, Sunny. Oh, he could do every trick in the book. Right. <laughs> even, even some I didn't teach him. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and you feel how open you get. And so that's, that's the connection. You're just back in with the connection again. That's why.
because it feels good and it's great. Yeah. And I think that they have so much in that contact to offer with us, to remember, to help us remember, that's the thing, to help us remember that we can and we are greater than just this physical vehicle. My dog always made me laugh. He had some great ways. I mean, I, I would tease him once in a while, you know, I'd always pretend that, you know, I'd always give him his treat after we had dinner, and so he'd get used to that, and then sometimes I'd pretend like I'd forget, you know, and just um, go and uh, go sit down or something, and he'd be like, what, huh? And then he'd come over a little closer, yep, and yep, a little bit, and then come a little closer, and he'd start barking, and then he'd jump up right up on the couch and jump on, on me, you know, hey, rrr, rrr, did you forget something, you know? But he's, uh, yeah, he was a great little character. I mean, I used to, when we'd play with the toy, I'd toss the, the toy, but, you know, sometimes I'd kind of fake it, you know, that I'm sitting, throwing the toy, and he'd kind of looking around, I'm like, wait a minute, how'd he do that? You know, just lots of fun little moments, you know. They're great little beings. Yeah. And to keep letting that be in your conscious awareness that he's still here. Yeah, a shared moment in love. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Thanks, you guys.